it's the official launch day here for Space Lugs, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. In this episode, which is a preview of what's to come, we'll be explaining to you, the audience, who we are, what you can expect from, and of course, where to find our content, why we love Star Wars Shatterpoint so much, and perhaps most importantly, exactly what a space lug is. My name is Tom Harper. Joining me in this episode is the better half of the space lugs, Cameron Dunn. All of our music is composed by the incredibly talented Gabriel Fisher, and all of the links to the places that you can check out and follow his projects are in the episode's show notes. We are so thrilled to have you tuning in, so please join us whilst we take our first official step into the realm of Star Wars Shatterpoint. You don't know the power of the dark. Welcome, welcome everyone to Space Slugs, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. I'm Cameron. You've already heard Tom in the intro. What lovely music that is, Tom. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, look, uh, a lot of work was put into that and I think it's paid off and there's a little bit more to come for the outro music. So stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I cannot wait to hear that. So this is episode zero. This is where the fun begins. We're just going to be chatting. You've already, you've already heard what we're going to be covering here on the podcast. So I think maybe, Tom, we can just dive right in. I think that sounds fantastic. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. So I guess the first question is people might have is who are the two of us? Who's Cam? Who's Tom? What are our gaming backgrounds? What sort of baggage are we dragging into Shatterpoint? Well, why, don't you, why don't you kick off for us there? Yeah, absolutely. So look, um, I think unlike a lot of other players of games, I've not really had a massive gaming background. I mainly just dabbled in a game called Warhammer 40,000. Uh, and that led into, of course, a few of the other uh, Warhammer iterations, such as Warhammer Fantasy Battles and Lord of the Rings, etc. cetera. Um, but in about, I think about 2014, I discovered a game called X-Wing uh, and I just fell head over heels for it. Um, and so my main background would just be 40K, X-Wing for about eight years. Uh, and that's actually how we met Cameron, which is uh, a very bright uh, moment of my life. Uh, and then, um, yeah, dabbled in MCP after X-Wing sort of uh, went went the wayside and, and now I'm here playing Shatterpoint. It was a real meat cute, wasn't it? It was. It was super, it was a, super meat cute. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm similar. I, I definitely had a, a lot more experience in board games and tabletop games. I've been an avid D and D player for about eight years now. Uh, I've always been big into strategy games. It's, it's, yeah, games and strategy and little moving little pieces around a board have always been a big, uh, a big bit of fun for me on the side um always been a main hobby of mine um i also yeah dabbled in x-wing for quite a while i came a little late later to the party in x-wing uh, i missed most of first edition i hit at the tail end of first edition and then we we you know jumped into second edition then during the the great plague we all sort of all those things fell to pieces there was some big changes in x-wing so tom and i sort of just fell out of love with the the new X-Wing. What was what was 2.5, I think people are still calling it now. Um, so that's some of the baggage that we're taking in is, you know, our great <laughs> love changed on us um, and we had to break up. So that that's, I think, a big piece of baggage that we've dragged into Shatterpoint. But we've also left it behind in a lot of ways. For we sure. never want to talk about it again. No, this that, um, that'll be the last time you ever hear about it. Yeah, we'll never mention it again. Although I, I must say that we both had had some a modicum of a modicum of success in X Wing. It was a pretty good system for us. It was something that that you and I did, you know, half decently at for myself. But you did quite well at. You were a bit of a terror on the scene here in Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, look, um, it was something that I was very passionate about, and probably just came to um, be something that I put a lot of work into. Really, I never really hit the sort of the top five in Australia. I would say, um, but uh, yeah, I, I would like to think that when I sat down, um, it was it was going to be a good time, but it was going to be a difficult time um, for my opponent as well. So yeah, that. That was it was something that I was so passionate about. I, I can't really put a finger on the love that I had for that game, but yeah, I, I'm trying to put the same energy into Star Wars Shatterpoint, uh, and that's sort of 
yeah, that's that's where we're at. I, I'm trying to level that up. Yeah, I don't think um, uh, that's a good that's a good uh, segue into another question for us. Is what drew us to Shatterpoint? I'll I guess I'll go first. You know, we I mentioned it to you earlier. Shatterpoint was like this holy grail from the sky. After we'd sort of fallen away from the game that must not be named, um, we saw Shatterpoint. It had more facets to it than than X Wing did. It felt like a game designed around strategy it wasn't just a pew pew machine it was very much a positioning machine it was very much a decision tree machine and it had really incredible miniatures um so for me i love star wars i'm a a giant star wars nerd uh so shatterpoint sort of took and this is how i felt about x-wing in in the original um version of x-wing was it was this marrying of Something that I loved, which was strategy, decision making, um, bluffing as well to a certain degree. But it was a marrying of Star Wars and that love of strategy that I have. And a new facet that I've been able to add on, which is painting of miniatures as well. Something I hadn't partaken in before. So that's a new skill I'm refining as we go on. Um, So all of that I really did love. And I think one thing that I love about Shatterpoint and from a game system perspective that I really, really enjoyed was the idea of... Uh, knowledge or information is equal across all people, uh, both players, sorry. So no one ever has some sort of hidden information that the other doesn't have. It's always open information. And and that I think that for me um, makes strategy and strategic decision-making much fairer and much more skill-based than if you had hidden information that your opponent doesn't have. Mm which I, I think X-Wing did have in the sense of dials were down. You couldn't quite see what your opponent's dials were. But for me, you know, you flip up pawns. I know what you're going to do. I know what you're capable of. Um, and if I miss something that you could be doing with pawns, well, that's on me, right? So that, that's one thing that I really liked about Shatterpoint. What about you? Yeah, look, um, I, the first time that we saw the miniatures, I was sort of uh, dabbling in Marvel Crisis Protocol. And then we had that reveal. And uh, I'm much more of a Star Wars fan than a Marvel fan, just in terms of the the universe and the content, etc. And so I, I think I was hooked from that moment. I saw the, the, the 212th clone troopers and I, I thought, oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> this is going to define my next chapter of gaming, I think. In terms of, you know, the gameplay and them talking about the combat trees and and what Shatterpoint mechanically did on the table, it was sort of a skirmish game that hadn't existed before that I really wanted. I mean, information is perfect. Before you roll dice at me, I know exactly how much damage you can do to me. I know exactly what you can do with each different character at a glance. And I think that's a, a perfect way of interacting on the tabletop between opponents. Um, it just felt really fair. It felt like the perfect balance between random and expected um, and just the iterative ways that I can express my own strategy uh, and respond to your strategy is sort of something that I haven't experienced on the tabletop before. Uh, I mean, you know, it existed in X-Wing, but it's very different. I mean, it's not a bluffing game. It's now a sort of feels like a chess game. You're moving a piece and I'm going to move a piece to respond to that. And that's how I see Shatterpoint. And that's probably why I love it so much. Um, So... Yeah, I mean, to me, honestly, at this stage, it is a perfect skirmish miniatures game. Uh, and I'm head over heels for the miniatures, for the the setting, uh, and for the gameplay. Oh, yeah, and the potential too. The game still mm. just has so much potential. We've, I mean, we're, what, six months in. Um, they hammered out a bunch of releases, and I don't feel like they've necessarily missed with any of those releases. I think they did a great job of blending in things we expected, things we didn't expect. I mean, I can very safely say I did not expect the Handmaidens would be such a top <laughs> priority for them. Um, but, you know, here they are. I think, yeah, I think AMG have done a fantastic job of the game so far. The first six months have been super healthy. I, You know, you and I both are on the same page. We don't think there's anything that's super overperforming right now. Mm-hmm. Um Yes, Shadowpoint, I think, has really landed well and is running hard and is doing a really great job of bringing exactly what it promised. Skirmish game, Star Wars, it's going to feel like a Saturday morning cartoon, which is, that was another way that I got sold on it, was that description they gave of a Saturday morning cartoon. Um, And it feels like that, but it's it's fun, but it's deep strategy. Um, And the game felt very complex, I think, for me at the beginning. But yeah, once you get your head around some of the core rules and you get your head around, and I'm still learning, right? And and I think that sort of brings us into uh, the slugs, space slugs. What are space slugs? 
do you want to tell the tell the lovely listeners, Tom, what you think a space slug is? <laughs> well, look, um, my favorite Star Wars film, without uh, derailing the podcast uh, too much, is um, Empire Strikes Back. And I just remember when, when when we were forming the space slugs for X Wing, we just wanted a logo. Um, and we wanted something to match up with Sydney because we're both from Sydney. So we, we ended up on like Sydney City Space Lugs. That was our first <laughs> sort of um, name that we chose. Uh, and then we just Im- imagined a huge exogorth that was trying to chase the Millennium Falcon um, out of that asteroid tunnel. And that's that's what an exogorth and that's what a space lug is to me. And I think uh, I think we've nailed it. <laughs> I think yeah. we've nailed it. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the origins of the space slugs as they are. So we've had a bit of a transformation moving into 2024. Um, we were originally known as the Sydney City Space Slugs. We started as a, an X-Wing squadron um, and we had pretty lofty goals, I think, at the beginning. Um, this was back in late 2019. You know, we were a star- an X-Wing squadron, and, and what that basically meant was we were essentially almost like a local team. And our goals, we had some pretty lofty goals, as I said. Um, our goals were to prom- pr- promote the community, promote X-Wing, promote the X-Wing players, promote the collaboration of of that of playing and of learning. We were a competitive. We had a bit of a, well, Tom and I are both pretty competitive people. Yeah. Um, so we had a competitive edge. The goal was for people to just get better at X Wing and to share knowledge and to train against each other, to play against each other, to try and go to worlds. We had shirts, we had hats, we had stickers. I've still got stickers if people want some. And and the the whole idea was we don't want people to hoard knowledge about yeah. X Wing about how, what's the good things. You know, they always had stuff like the Rule of Eleven, the idea of jousting. That was stuff that you know you sort of picked up if you went to a tournament and someone made a joke and you go, what's that? And what we wanted to do was just give that information to people and work together, support each other, celebrate with each other. And as we're moving into 2024 now, the goal is to take that same idea that we had for the squadron, but this time turn it into a more global idea. And to deliver that, we've got a podcast and more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I guess the the mission statement that we want to have for the slugs or the space slugs here, taking that concept that we had in X-Wing and, and, and putting it into Shatterpoint is we want to produce and provide the best Shatterpoint content available, right? So not only through the podcast, but also through um, a Discord that you've set up, Cameron, beautifully, and Correct. also through a YouTube channel. So all of those facets uh, are going to be how we try and provide the audience with the the resources to become the best shadow point players that they can be basically would you would you agree yeah i think um one of one of the goals we both have for the podcast for the twitch streams for the youtube uh for the discord is every time you listen to one piece of something we've created with every time you visit the discord every time you watch a VOD or you watch a video we've posted onto our YouTube, every time you listen to an episode of this podcast, we want you to have been have gained something from that, right? So we want you to be better at Shatterpoint at the end of each consumption of media coming from the slugs. So whether it's you learning something you shouldn't be doing, something you should be doing, learning a new way of approaching a problem, you know, uh, figuring out a new sort of tick box to add to your squad building um, criteria, we really just want to be sharing information and knowledge so that everyone has access to the same the same competitive ideas and you can get better. That's the goal. The goal is for all of us. We want to build Shatterpoint to be a behemoth, um, to be the best game out there. And we really want to promote yeah, people getting better. We Not everyone needs to play competitively, but there's no harm in everyone getting better. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Not, you know, from the kitchen table to the tournament hall. I mean, uh, it's just going to promote a little bit more fun. It's going to pr- provide a few different little challenges to try and solve and a few problems to, to go around. And I think that just promotes enjoyment for a lot of people. Yeah, and I think the best way for people to learn um, is this podcast format that we're doing. So perhaps we can just dive in and talk about the podcast in a more a more sort of micro sense. We can really drill down into what the podcast will be. So Tom, you're going to be our host on the podcast. You're going to be sort of running lead on the actual uh, 
podcasting of the actual hosting and, and the recording of these podcasts. So why don't you tell these beautiful listeners uh, maybe when they can expect episodes, what episodes might focus on, you know, what what's the what are the plans that we have for the podcast and how it might take shape? What will they expect from episode one, given this is episode zero? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got some great plans for episode one. What I would try and say to the audience is you can expect an episode once a month at least. Uh, and predominantly in the first week of those months. So we've got a really great episode lined up uh, with Morgan Reed, uh, aka the Dark Lord himself, um, in the first week of January. So you can expect that, and that'll be filled with some amazing content, I would say. And the episodes are basically going to be broken up into various segments. So we wanted it to be nice and flexible. We don't want it to be too long form. Uh, and we wanted to, to be able to encompass a, a variety of different people. So the main segment of each episode is essentially going to be an interview or a deep dive on a particular topic. So episode one in January will likely be an interview about Morgan's success in the most recent TTS Shatterpoint League. But it'll also probably splice in, you know, the way that he approached things, how he squad builds, you know, how he approaches Shatterpoint, etc. Um, and so that'll be the main topic, uh, as an example. The and I can, sec- oh, you go. Sorry, I, I, I can say, I just want to dive in on, as a little preview for that episode one. I actually think a really great um, taster for what you can expect from an episode like that is actually on the latest uh, video that's been uploaded onto the Space Slugs YouTube channel. Um, it's a, a top eight game for the Never Tell Me The Odds league that's uh, happening for TTS. Um, it's Evil Houdini versus Sandwich Toby. It's actually the first time we've had Tom and uh, Morgan commentating on a game, and it is a really, really great commentary. It's a fantastic game, um, but their commentary, I think, is some of the best commentary I've actually heard on any tabletop game, maybe <laughs> ever. And I'm not just saying that because they're, uh, you know, I like both of them. Um, it's a really, really great episode. So if you uh, want to go check that out, um, that'll give you a really good understanding of the the type of discussions you can expect on the podcast. I think. Mm, yeah, no, that's a, that's a great segue there. So the first, as we said, was the um, the sort of um, the deep dive on a topic. Uh, that that'd be the first segment in in any episode. The second segment is going to be a stats roundup. So there's a really good tool called Longshanks that a lot of these tournaments are being run out of, uh, and it does a few things in terms of statistics breakdowns. So. One of the ideas that we had on the podcast was to have a brief month long stats breakdown. So each episode, we'll just quickly talk about what's hot, what's been doing well at tournaments, um, and and what we can expect. And that will be able to feed into, hey, you know, what's a problem that you might be commonly encountering on the tabletop, and how can we uh, move on from that, or how can we overcome that, or what are the what are the tactical decisions that we can make on the table to prevent that from happening again or prevent that from from becoming um, something that we repeatedly lose to or something similar, right? Uh, so that's sort of the main stats breakdown idea. Yeah, and I think um, statistics are, re- are really, really important. I mean, anyone who's ever done any sort of data analytics will know, you know, that that sort of taking a broad look at data can be misleading in some ways, but also I think in, in terms of this game, we still haven't really seen a really deep meta shakeout. Correct. And I don't I'm not saying that in a negative way. I think it's more that things are just working. If you want to play something on the table, you'll find some success. Sometimes you might have to work a little bit harder and lean a little bit more on your strategy. Other uh, other squadrons might just let you sort of uh, take a little bit of a back seat and they'll play themselves. Um, but I think nothing's super overperforming right now. But a look at stats can really help give us an understanding of what might be building um, a bit of a wave, right? We can try and try and predict some of those meta decisions that might happen down the line, especially as the game gets bigger and people, you know, whenever there's a system out, people are going to try and solve it. Um, and I think with the statistics, we want to be ahead of that. We want to try and stop things before they get solved and try and give you a better insight into what might be coming down the pipeline and what's rearing its head and how we might be able to, one, counter that change whatever that is whatever whatever is building um or what we might expect the sort of um meta as it is to shift to so i really love i'm a big data nerd i know you're a big data nerd tom big time um and i think a macro look at what's being played i mean you, you've you've got to thank the maker for long shanks because you know it's such a great way to capture um information and data points and for us to just be able to look at them and point at them and say, yep, you know, we're seeing a lot of more lately. What's a great way to counter more? 
uh, really, really helpful. So I'm really excited for that. That's something I'm, I'm pumped to hear. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be great to have Morgan's insight on that as well. And just, you know, from a, an individual that's currently the number one ranked player in, in, in Shatterpoint uh, and how he would approach solving those problems and, and how he would approach squad building in the midst of all these necessary stats or these these prominent statistics or characters etc. Yeah. and how we can take him off that number one spot i think that's <laughs> i think that's what you need to find out is mate what's his secret sauce what's and how do we get source? you how do we knock you off the podium here absolutely absolutely um and then that third segment so we're gonna you know try and have a, a contained podcast and not not too long form and that third segment will usually just be upcoming events probably with a focus on Australia just because that's where we are and that's what we're exposed to um, and you know we're still trying to grow the community here in Australia and other other content creators can definitely look after other areas of the world right so those events and those upcoming events will definitely be you know focused on the Australian and the online scenes uh, and um, we'll definitely be trying to interview um, hosts of events so in episode one we'll have a focus on uh, an upcoming event here in Australia called CanCon that's in Canberra and that'll be run by a local player by the name of Michael so we'll have him on the show we'll ask him some questions about what he can expect from or what we can expect from the event and why we should be so excited about it Um, so that's going to be really exciting as well so a little bit of how to help the community uh, not only um, squad building and you know playing but also how we can help the community grow and how we can make sure that everyone goes to these events and has the best time that they can. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I'm really excited to, to sort of peek behind the curtain on that as well because I know Michael's been doing a lot here in Sydney um, for uh, Shatterpoint locally um, and also, you know, trying to support people around the country as well. I'm really excited to hear his thoughts, um, you know, like I said, a peek behind the curtain on what it takes to plan something like that um, because I'm hoping that when you can give that, you can arm people with that information they will feel more confident to run something at their local store, mm. right? And I think that's something that we really want people to understand is, you know, it's not like you don't have to put in a huge amount of effort to organize a Shatterpoint tournament. You just need a few tables um, and the Longshank system, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's going to be really exciting. It's something people I haven't really heard before. You know, I've listened to a lot of um, podcasts on, you know, back when we were deep dived into X-Wing. I don't really hear a lot about tournament organization and, and how that operates and how you can get involved. So I think it's going to be a really, really good chance for people who have maybe always wanted to, to, to be a TO in some way, um, a tournament organizer, and how they might, you know, they might dive, uh, they might be able to get started from that um, and get an understanding from Michael. I think that'll be really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just what to expect come 2024 in Shatterpoint, you know, in, in the January, February area, but also further out, you know, what, what exciting things are we planning uh, in the future? And it's just going to be a really good time. And, and we hoping that that's going to be a good community resource to get a few people out of these tables, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much the podcast, right? That's, I mean, that, that's a, we're talking broad strokes here, guys. I mean, things could get crazy. You never know. <laughs> um, the, I think a really important thing with all the stuff that we're doing is it's iterative. Okay. So, you know, this is our first time trying, uh, trying something like this, a project like this. Um, we're putting a lot of effort in, but we really want to hear from people, you know, what are they liking? What are they not liking? This is designed for everyone. It's for the community. So if the community's got any ideas any questions um there's a really great place we've set up already for people to give some feedback and that's not just on the podcast that's on our twitch channel our youtube channel anything else that you see us doing we really want to hear about it in the discord which we will have a link for in the the episode notes um so please jump in um at the moment it's just tom and i we're just rattling around in there just you know looking at each other waiting for people to turn up to the party (laughs) Um, so jump in. I mean, we, all we want is we want discussion. We want strategy. We want to see people's um, we want to see people's list ideas. We want to see people's ideas for the podcast, for the YouTube channel, for the Twitch channel. Um, we're just pumped. We really just want to be making stuff for the community and for the community to be giving us some feedback and telling us what they want more of, what they want less of. Yeah. So please jump into the Discord. Give us ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Tom. I, I just wanted to plug our Discord there. Um, if people hearing what what's coming up on that on the podcast there and you've got some ideas how you think that might fit into that format please jump in there let us know um we're taking taking all uh all submissions 
Not that we're going to do them, but, I mean, we'll take them. We'll take the submissions. I might put them in my special folder. Um, but, yeah, other than that, uh, what else? Speaking of um, the YouTube and the Twitch content, Tom, um, at the moment, you know, you've, you've had, we've had a very consistent uh, stream of content coming onto our Twitch and our YouTube. Some of the best Shatterpoint um, game content I've seen to date um, really, really exciting to watch. Um, you know, I watch it twice. I watch it live and I watch it on the VOD as well on YouTube. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the plans for YouTube and Twitch in the coming 2024? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, at the moment, the I've been mainly streaming on Twitch and then uploading those reports onto our YouTube channel. Um, and it's been a bit um, sort of uh, all over the place. It's a bit scattered just in terms of me trying to fit availabilities in um, for those players and trying to capture some, at least initially, some, some of those lesser played characters. So I really want to have a good spread. You know, we're still hunting for an Anakin Skywalker player, uh, which will actually be me uh, this Thursday, which will be the 28th of December, I believe. Um, but yeah, look, we've, we've been trying to just uh, stream once a week at least. Uh, it's probably about 1.5 videos a week. But what we're going to be moving to in 2024 is Australian time Mondays. So I've sort of, I'm a shift worker, so I've blocked out that Monday. Um, and it's just going to be for Shatterpoint content and communicating with um, the audience, right? So we're going to have multiple streams maybe uh, per week, um, but they're going to be settling around that Monday. And then you can expect after they've been streamed live on Twitch, we can also see them up on YouTube. And what we'll do is also on the podcast is have a little bit of a, hey, this was a really great game. I mean, you've already heard Cameron say, check out Sandwich Toby up against Evil Houdini on the stream. That was really good. I think not only for the game content, but also for the commentary as well. Uh, I think we did a really good job. Um, and it's predominantly been just myself in the commentary box, but as we become more regular, uh, and it's not as short notice with me trying to get games on and live, uh, we'll hopefully have some more regular commentary uh, individuals joining us in that box. Yeah, and I think um, uh, we want we want to stream as much Shatterpoint as we can. We want people to be able to consume as much Shatterpoint as they can. Mm. And, you know, the Discord is a really great way for people. If you've got a league game coming up or an important game and you want to be streamed, you want to provide people. Because I think, you know, streaming is not for everyone. Not everyone wants that added pressure of being on stream. But I've always seen it as a more altruistic uh, approach to gaming where you can let people see your mistakes that you make and also the fantastic decisions that you make. Mm. And also, it's a great resource for yourself. If you get a game streamed and then we upload it to our YouTube channel, guess what? You can go back and watch that stream, take notes, and get better. Uh, there is nothing I love more than going back and watching streams that I've played on and learning from the mistakes that I made because it's really easy. You know, some of these games can go for two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to forget some of the moments that um, that really actually made you lose the game and having a stream, a recording of that stream is really important. So we may not be able to fit you into the schedule, but if you have an important game coming up that you want streamed for a local league or anything like that, just reach out. We're Like I said, we're always looking to try and stream as much Shatterpoint as we can. Um, so our Discord is the best way to do that as well, yeah. of course. Absolutely. And I mean, look, uh, you know, we've been doing, I think we've got 15 or 16 um, videos up on the YouTube uh, channel as of right now with some fantastic content. But I really want to highlight the importance of that Discord community that we're trying to set up. You know, if you do have some feedback on a video or you do want to see something specific, jump in that Discord. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a resource that we've created so you can communicate any and all concerns or ideas to us. And just general feedback as well you know if you have something that you want to see or you just want to say thanks or you just want to say hey this was really good jump in there let us know that we're doing yeah. a good job but also like subscribe to the youtube and leave a comment on the youtube channel as well because that helps all of those analytics things that they tell us to do um so that we can reach more people obviously. yeah yeah absolutely so we're 195 subscribers at the moment as of the 24th of december or whenever you're listening to this video uh sorry podcast um if we can get that to 200 by new year's that'd be that'd be awesome Ooh, gangbusters um so yeah so basically at the moment the plan for the youtube is we will be uploading vods um from the streams but the hope is that if we can devote more time to uh the space lugs project that we'll be able to actually create some youtube exclusive content um we've got a few ideas rattling around in the brain 
we're obviously open to ideas people might have um, if they want to get involved. Uh, but then we also do want to try and produce some content for the YouTube specifically. Um, but that will probably still be um, uh, actual games, mm. but it's a, you know, a different format than other, other than the just, you know, a live stream. It might be um, a, a more edited version of a game. Um, it could be a live game because at the moment we're just doing TTS games. Um, so, you know, the more support you can give us on the channel means, you know, the more effort we can put in. It's directly proportional. So the the love we receive and the subscribers we get um, allows us to justify spending more and more time on the project and more and more time on the YouTube, on the Discord, on the Twitch, on the podcast. So, yeah, please jump in, um, support. It's free to subscribe. It's free to join the Discord. The Discord is completely open. We don't want to gatekeep the Discord at all. We want it to be a, a place for people to come and celebrate Shatterpoint. Um, we want to, you know, eventually we want to start doing our own leagues. Um, like I said, we've got some lofty goals here, guys. Um, and we feel like there is a, a space in the market, uh, a space in the community for us to jump in and, and really provide something that's not being provided right now, um, at least to the level, the degree that we want to be doing it. So, yeah, um, I think that's, yeah, that's that's really great. Um, Tom, the space slugs, I think, are going to have a big year in 2024. I'd like to think so, absolutely. So, yeah, look, um, no, that's absolutely right, Cameron. And I, I think we do have some lofty goals for 2024, but I think we can achieve them. And we're really, really excited to to give it a crack. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, we, um, we're we doing this out of, out of love, right? We love the game. We love the community. Um, and we really want people to, to, to get involved, right? So we don't want to gatekeep. That's why our Discord is free. You know, we're, I mean, subscribing on YouTube is always free, but we do have, if people want to, you know, give more support because they love our mission statement of people, you know, getting better at Shatterpoint with, with every um, episode, uh, then we do have a way people can support us in a, in a financial sense. We've got a Patreon that's set up. Um, we've only got one tier at the moment. Uh, we have plans for more, but we want to see what the feedback looks like from the community if people really want to get involved. At the moment, it is uh, is US $3, um, but we're Australian, so that comes out to $5 Australian. dollars. That's a, a little pink note. Right, that's all it is, um, and what, what that do you know? At the moment, it'll get you access to a special uh, spot in the Discord where Tom and I will be regularly jumping into to chat with people, a way for you to sort of break through the noise to chat to us. Um, but we do have plans for more um, rewards. We have plans for more tiers in the future. But at the moment, you know, the goal is we just want to get started. Right, we don't want to overcomplicate things. We want to keep a nice um, ease of access to us and ease of access to to what we're doing. And if you want to find our Patreon, it is patreon.com slash space slugs. Very simple. Very, very simple. Patreon.com slash space slugs. On there, you know, we'll have, um, we'll eventually, uh, we have lots of, like I said, we have lots of plans for the Patreon, but at the moment it's it's more of a uh, an extra big thumbs up to us to say, guys, we love what you're planning and we really want more of it. And if you give us that big thumbs up, that's going to motivate Tom and I. We love money. We love it. <laughs> no, that's not that's not true. We do love money, um, but this isn't, you know, we're not here to make money. Um, anything we make on that Patreon is getting invested directly back into the project. So you know that if you if if you sign up to that Patreon and you start seeing our quality improve and our rate of um, publishing imp- uh, increase, you're going to know that was directly thanks to your joining of the Space Slugs where, you know, you can join and become a fellow slug. Yeah, and that's the, that's the goal for everyone. We want to sort of <laughs> make everyone into a slug. So, yeah, that's that's our that's our that's part of our mission statement, I guess you could say. Yeah, we want everyone to be a slug. We want uh, an army of a thousand slugs to march across Earth and destroy all of the tabletop uh, gaming scenes. That's the goal, <laughs> and just predominantly play Shadowpoint. That's it. Yeah, and predominantly, yeah, pretty much only play Shadowpoint. Don't ever play forty k or. Uh, MCP even are we are we enemies with MCP? You reckon? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, oh, friends with MCP. Considering the uh, the studio makes MCP and Shadowpoint, I can't say that we're. But enemies. if we if we destroy MCP, that means that uh, the AMG will have more time for Shadowpoint. I guess, I guess so. I guess so. No, no, no. The only love, only love on this podcast. Only love. Um, but no, look, uh, that is a very important um, thing that I'd like to highlight is that uh, we only have one tier at this point on that on that Patreon. 
We don't want to lock anyone out of any content um, at all. So it's all about community growth, uh, especially for the sort of the the the, the setup and the origin um, or, or the genesis of our of our podcast and our content creation here. So if you do want to, and we'd be incredibly thankful uh, if you do want to jump on that Patreon, you know that's awesome. Um, but but just keep in mind that everything's free. So if you don't or you're not in a position to, you can still communicate with us in exactly the same way that you you could if you were a Patreon. Exactly. Yep. And we really want people to get in at the ground floor, you know, jump in. You can, um, we'd love it if you also, you know, if you subscribe to our Patreon, don't, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, jumping on Twitch, but if you want to subscribe to Twitch, get rid of those pesky ads that open up at the beginning of uh, a Twitch stream, please jump in, just support us in any way that you can. Um, and every dollar, every cent we make goes directly back into the podcast. Um, you know, we can't live off it. Maybe one day, uh, not today. Uh, you know that three dollars is basically going to help buying us buying more equipment, um, us you know, buying better software, us um, you know be able being able to spend more time and, and get more graphics made and things like that. There's you know uh, it is really going to help and 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 a lot of the stuff that we we want to do if if any innovations we can come up with we really want to share with the community as well because um, you know we don't just want the space slugs to be. I mean, we want to be the best podcast. We want to be the best, best Twitch stream, the best YouTube channel. But we want everyone, you know, we want all content creators to, you know, we, we want everyone to be able to provide Shatterpoint content and for people to be able to consume it. So, yep. you know, it's a, our, our, the, the effort here is collaborative, right? That's one of the, the key words here is we want to hear from you. We want to hear from other content creators that we ourselves are listening to. Um, you know, we, we really want to grow the community as a whole and all the facets that it has. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that, that sums it up perfectly, really. I'm so good at this. Should I be the host? Maybe I should be the host. Maybe, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tune out. I'll just, I'll stick to the YouTube and the stream. How yeah. Yeah. That? Take a back seat, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, look again, I, I can't highlight how excited I am for 2024 and how excited I am to bring you guys, the audience more Shadowpoint content. Yeah, going to be a big year. Um, so is there anything else you think we should cover, Tom, or should we call episode zero a wrap? I think we can call episode zero a wrap and we can preview that uh, sweet, sweet outro music. Oh, cannot wait. I am pumped. Are you just going to play it off your phone into the microphone? <laughs> I might try and make it a little bit more complicated than that, a little bit more of a higher production uh, level. But yeah. Okay. Okay, well, you know, each to their own. Um, so when can people expect episode one? Now, they've listened all the way to the end of episode zero. When can they expect episode one? Uh, within the first seven days of January, so very, very soon. Ooh, wow. That's quick. And that is with, uh, who, sorry, you said someone, the Dark Lord? Yeah, it's going to be with Morgan Reed uh, uh, doing a sort of, uh, you know, segment number one, um, deep dive into a topic. Uh, and then also Michael Watson, who's going to be um, the, hey, look at this upcoming event um, and how how we can go around uh, attending that event and getting excited for it. Oh, and I am excited. And that event is CanCon, of course, uh, on the Australia Day long weekend here in Canberra. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, I think uh, that's I think that's all the questions I had, um, and I think we can yeah wrap the wrap the episode. Fantastic. Well, look, thanks so much, Cameron, for joining us here uh, or being the, the main man behind the scenes at the at the Slugs. Um, of course, you guys have been listening to Space Slugs, a Star Wars Shatterpoint podcast. This has been episode zero. I've been Tom, also known as the Harp Daddy on the socials such as Discord. Uh, and you've been? I've been Cam, uh, also known as the Cam Damage on some of the socials um, and just known as the the, the best slug as well <laughs> the top slug the top slug yeah currently top slug currently top slug excellent absolutely so yeah look guys um that is it and we cannot wait to bring you episode one in a few weeks so join in jump on that discord um communicate with us in any way that you'd like uh have a look at our youtube and our twitch and of course all of the links can be found in the show notes the ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the force